Episode 356, Second Round As the bout between Marcel and Waldo wore on, the at first excited Jake gradually lost interest. This was because Marcel had chosen the same path as Giorgio when he faced Waldo, who was moving at an incredible speed. He was also constantly looking for flaws in Waldo. The only difference was that, as Waldo used the movement technique, he paid special attention to the consumption of his spiritual power. He was also constantly adjusting his state of mind. He wanted to prevent himself from revealing any flaws because of his mental state. This had put Marcel in a difficult situation. If it hadn't been for Marcel's powerful strength and mental state cultivation base, he might not have been able to defeat Waldo. This caused Henrik, who was standing under the arena, to assume a serious expression. Fortunately, because Waldo had used up too much of his spiritual power, in the end, he was unable to use the advanced movement technique. Therefore, he admitted defeat. The battle had taken more than half an hour, and in the process, the victor, Marcel, had also used up a lot of his spiritual power. Therefore, he didn't talk to the people around him as he walked down from the arena. Instead, he sat down and began to recover the spiritual power he had consumed. The next bout was between Giorgio, who was ranked second, and Villanova, who was ranked 11th. Giorgio won easily against Villanova, who was far weaker than him with just a single beginner sword technique. The next bout was between Henrik, who was ranked 3rd, and Simeon, who was ranked 6th. Jake had thought that Henrik would be able to easily defeat Simeon in this match and win yet another round. However, it soon became clear that Simeon's strength was not much weaker than Henrik's, and when it came to defense, Simeon was slightly stronger. The fight between them was thus a tug of war. In the end, Henrik relied on the spiritual power in his energy center to barely defeat Simeon. This made many of the present disciples doubt Henrik's ranking, thinking that he was not worthy of being in the top three. Henrik thus wore a gloomy expression as he stepped down from the arena. The following match was between Sarah, who was ranked fifth, and Mark, who was ranked ninth. As he faced Sarah's strange and varied attacks, it was obvious that Mark did not have a good way to deal with her. After a few dozen moves, he was forced to use the sword technique. Because Sarah was not only extremely strong, but also a great beauty, many of the male disciples in the audience began to speculate that she should perhaps replace Henrik as the third-ranked disciple of the outer sect. Hearing this gossip, Henrik flew into a rage. The sixth match of the second round was between Rivas, who was ranked fourth, and Torsten Hobb, who was ranked twelfth. The result of the match was just as everyone had expected. Rivas easily struck down Torsten. With that, the second round was over, and right away, Drindus announced the start of the third round. The first match of the third round would be between the 10th ranked Adam and the 7th ranked Waldo. To everyone's surprise, Adam, who had just ascended the arena, admitted defeat. This made the spectators puzzled and dissatisfied. Even Giannis, who was ranked 13th, had taken the initiative to fight Marcel. Why would Adam, who was ranked 10th, be afraid of Waldo, who was ranked 7th? Yet Jake understood why Adam admitted defeat. First of all, the spring and autumn sweep he was good at was useless against Waldo, who was faster than everyone else. So, it was better for him to conserve his strength so that he could better deal with the next opponent. Secondly, he and Waldo belonged to the Justice Peak and could be considered comrades of the same subsect. If he took the initiative to admit defeat, Waldo could conserve his strength too and they could gain Rembert's favorable impression at last. Adam completely ignored the crowd and walked down from the arena, then closed his eyes and fell into deep thought. The second match of the third round was between Marcel and Villanova. Perhaps because of Adam's influence, Villanova, who had ascended the arena, also chose to admit defeat right away. However, the audience understood why Villanova had chosen to admit defeat, and they gave him a warm round of applause. This made Adam, who had his eyes closed and was deep in thought, quite dissatisfied. The third match of the third round was between Giorgio and Simeon. Facing Simeon, who was good at defense, Giorgio chose a simple way to fight. In one breath, he used all 72 intermediate sword techniques, breaking through Simeon's defense and obtaining victory. Giorgio's simple and easy victory further shamed Henrik, and now there was a general consensus that Henrik had been ranked too high at the outset, and it was Henrik who was fighting in the next round against Mark, who was ranked ninth. Henrik, who had a belly full of anger, launched an attack that was as strong as a heavy storm, immediately overwhelming the weaker Mark. In the end, 
Mark was stabbed in the right shoulder above his heart by Henrik's sword, and he became the first person in the ranking competition to suffer a serious injury. Henrik's actions caused a strong dissatisfaction among the audience because, with Henrik's strength, he could have easily defeated Mark without inflicting injuries on him. His actions resulted in his popularity declining even further among the audience members. The fifth match of the third round was between Sarah and Torsten. Faced with battling a delicate beauty like Sarah, Torsten was hesitant to use his full strength, and as a result, he was easily defeated. As this match wrapped up, Jake finished adjusting his condition. He gestured to the people around him, then walked up to the arena step by step. His opponent this time was the fourth-ranked Rivas, who was 19 years old and came from the Najad family of a remote kingdom. He was a lower level 7 cultivation talent, and he was skilled in the sword technique. Jake recalled this information in his head as he stepped into the arena. Hello, senior brother, Jake greeted. Junior brother, hello, Rivas chimed back. Perhaps it was because he came from a remote kingdom, but Rivas's tone revealed a sense of insecurity from time to time. Let the competition begin, Drindus declared, when she saw both warriors were ready. Episode 357 Rising Reputation Rivas, who was ranked fourth in the outer sect, had the water attribute physique, one of the five basic physiques. Not only was he good at attacking, but he also had an outstanding defense. In order to defeat such an opponent, besides maintaining sufficient attack power, Jake also had to be vigilant of Rivas's attacks. Sun scorching! Jake yelled as soon as the battle had commenced. By now, this powerful saber technique had reached the status of mid-grade combat skill. Plus, this was the blade method that Jake was the most competent at. Even in the face of this relatively common blade technique, Rivas remained vigilant. After all, he had observed the previous bout between Adam and Jake, and at that point had detected that Jake was capable of fighting at an energy transforming stage level. Therefore, when faced with the sun scorching skill, Rivas immediately used the intermediate sword technique that he was most proficient in. Then, he combined it with the peak stage middle rank movement technique and used his speed advantage to try his best to avoid Jake's spirit sword. Above all, he wanted to keep his own vital spirit tool from being damaged. Rivas's idea was a good one. In fact, it had seemed the perfect way to deal with Jake given his low cultivation base. However, Rivas had neglected one of the most fundamental considerations, namely that Jake, who had the enhancement of energy transforming level skills, was not slower than him. In fact, he was even a little stronger than him. Therefore, after exchanging dozens of blows and familiarizing himself with Rivas's attack pattern, Jake began to consciously increase his speed. When Jake raised his speed so that it was equal to Rivas's, the situation instantly changed. At the same time, after getting familiar with Rivas's attack pattern, he gradually gained the upper hand. Seeing Jake's speed increase, Rivas suddenly sensed that Jake was as formidable an opponent as the top-ranked Marcel. Since he could no longer gain the upper hand in terms of speed, he was in a dilemma of attacking and defending at the same time. When faced with a saber technique at the energy transforming level, it was not possible to just rely on defense. Therefore, in the end, he decided to take the risk and fully test Jake's abilities. He wanted to see precisely how strong Jake's spirit blade was, and he was still in disbelief at the fact that Jake could fight like an energy transforming warrior. As their swords violently collided, the explosive attribute energy and the spiritual power produced a deafening roar. Along with the roar, Jake was forced three steps back by the rebounding force of the two weapons. As for Rivas, he took five steps back, and his face instantly turned pale. Feeling his continuously trembling spirit blade, Jake looked at Rivas with a surprised expression. Ever since unexpectedly grasping the enhancement of his energy transforming level abilities, he had experienced dozens of battles of various sizes. There were strong and weak opponents, and the weakest opponent was only at the first layer of the body refining period. The strongest opponent was at the first level of the energy transforming period, yet even his strongest opponents had not been able to force Jake to retreat. However, Rivas, who was only a pre-energy transforming stage warrior, was able to do it. At this moment, Jake truly attached great importance to Rivas and regarded him as an equal opponent. 
Rivas looked at the tiny crack in his spirit sword, and he didn't know whether to laugh or cry. After all, it had taken unleashing all his strength to get Jake's attention, and now he was filled with regret, for he knew it was a mistake to unleash his full strength so early in the battle. What was he going to do with a damaged spirit sword? Jake, meanwhile, could now sense that Rivas's strength had likely reached the first level of the energy transforming realm. Fire Harvester! He screamed. He didn't want to hold anything back at this point, so he mustered all his strength and combined this sword technique with the Thunderwind Kick, which was an advanced movement technique. Rivas was startled when he saw Jake's sudden increase in speed. Only now did he understand that Jake hadn't been using his full strength before now. In order to prevent his spirit sword from being damaged again, Rivas took the initiative to shout out, I withdraw! This would allow him to conserve some of his energy for the subsequent bouts. Faced with this sudden end to the battle, Jake had no choice but to abruptly retract his spiritual energy, and the force of the blowback nearly caused him to be sick. Brother, you are the fourth-ranked disciple of the outer sect. How can you admit defeat on your own accord? Jake openly wondered. Jake was entirely dissatisfied by this unceremonious end to the battle. At the same time, his forthright question shocked the elders and Pierre, who were seated on the main viewing platform, as well as the thousands of disciples gathered around the arena to watch. They were baffled by why Jake wouldn't be savoring this experience of so easily earning yet another victory point. Junior brother, your strength makes me admire you very much. I am not your equal, so I choose to admit defeat, Rivas explained. Then he hurriedly escaped from the arena, as he was afraid that Jake would encourage him to continue the competition. Jake wins! Drindus shouted. Then she looked at Jake with a complicated expression, one tinged with both surprise and admiration. For his part, Jake could only accept that the bout had been called and climbed down from the arena. He approached Alicia and the others, who at this point were beyond shocked. After all, Jake had just handily defeated the fourth-ranked Outer Sect Disciple, so his strength was no doubt equal to that of Marcel's or Giorgio's at this point, and he was by far the most popular among the three. Episode 358 The Furious Henrik Pierre, I want to discuss something with you. Elder Grey offered with a smile as he sat beside Pierre on the main viewing platform. Elder Grey, I am willing to discuss anything besides Jake Hampton, Pierre quipped. Although Pierre was young, he was not stupid. Jake had just finished the competition, and Elder Grey was clearly focused on Jake's remarkable performance. At the same time, Pierre was well aware of the fact that Jake's talent and potential were clearly above his and no doubt Grey wanted to discuss having Jake join the sect leader's faction, and wanted Pierre to help convince Jake that this was the right move. Thinking of this, Pierre knew that he alone could not influence Jake's decision. Therefore, he quietly took out a fingernail-sized purple jade pendant from his storage bag and crushed it when no one was looking. After that, he completely relaxed and sat casually on his chair. Bartleby, sitting a couple of seats away, noticed the move, and figured that perhaps this is a part of the sect leader Peak's test of Jake's true abilities. Drindus interrupted their thoughts as she announced, In the first match of the fourth round of the ranking competition, contestant number one, Adam Aletta, will face contestant number ten, Villanova Khan. As Drindus announced the start of the fourth round, the commotion caused by Jake's victory temporarily subsided. The attention of everyone in the scene began to shift to the match. This made Jake who was standing under the arena, heave a sigh of relief. Although he knew that if he defeated any contestant in the ranking competition, it would cause a huge stir, he hadn't imagined his victory would be so sensational. The thought of thousands of people looking at him with admiration made him feel a great deal of pressure. If he had only known that Pierre and Elder Grey were now focused almost solely on his performance, he would have no doubt felt more relaxed for he had entered the sect competition not only hoping to earn first place, but also intended to attract the attention of the sect's higher-ups, for this would no doubt prove beneficial to his future cultivation, and provide him with a layer of protection. And he had done just that. As Adam and Villanova ascended to the arena, Jake relished the opportunity to recede from everyone's attention. 
he used the medicinal pills to recover his consumed spiritual power while paying attention to the ongoing competition. Adam had taken the initiative to admit defeat when he faced Waldo in the last match. Although he had been criticized by many of the disciples present, this had given him an extra round of rest and time to adjust his condition. At this moment, facing an opponent who was weaker than him, Adam had vented all the depression he had suppressed in his heart in the previous round. Villanova kept retreating, and in the end, he almost withdrew from the arena. Fortunately, he noticed that something was wrong in time. After using the movement technique to dodge Adam's attack, he began to use his mental strength to fight Adam. The idea wasn't a bad one. At the same time, Adam was not easy to deal with since he was the number 10 outer sect disciple. After launching over a hundred fierce attacks, Adam quickly discovered the problem. After that, he began to adjust his state of mind. Finally, he struck Villanova out of the arena and won the round. The second match of the fourth round was between Marcel and Simeon, who specialized in defense and chose to defend and counterattack. Simeon's strategy wasn't wrong. It was also the only strategy he could choose, but his opponent was too powerful. As the number one expert among the disciples of the outer sect, Marcel's strength had already surpassed the peak first level of the energy transforming realm and reached the terrifying second level. His attacks were extremely powerful. Therefore, Simeon chose to defend and counterattack. Under Marcel's continuous attacks, his defense was broken after less than a hundred strikes. Fortunately, Marcel wasn't perturbed. After breaking Simeon's defense, he withdrew his weapon in time and didn't let Simeon get hurt. Since he had not resorted to the same violent tactics as Henrik, Marcel had won the favor of most of the disciples. This made his popularity rise again. The third match of the fourth round was between Giorgio and Mark. Immediately, looking his opponent in the eye, Mark could tell his fate was not good. Ever since joining the ranking competition, he had felt that he had been abandoned by the heavens. In the first three bouts, he had lost devastatingly each time, and this had left him embarrassed. Adding insult to injury, he had suffered a serious injury in the third round against Henrik. At this point, not only had Mark not fully recovered from his injuries, but his opponent was also Giorgio, who was ranked second. There was no doubt that he would lose. Therefore, before Giorgio could say anything, Mark admitted defeat on his own accord. The fourth bout was between Henrik and Torsten. Henrik, who had already been in a bad mood throughout the ranking competition, was on the verge of exploding at this point. He used the movement technique to enter the arena. Then, before Drindus had even announced the start of the match, he took out his spirit sword and rushed toward Torsten. Fortunately, Torsten had prepared for the inevitability of Henrik being a difficult opponent. He had thus positioned himself at the edge of the arena, and as soon as he saw Henrik charging at him with murderous intent, he calmly yet loudly admitted defeat, then jumped off the arena. He didn't want to die here, after all. Fortunately, Drindus quickly sensed Henrik's strange behavior and used the power of the Divine Soul to temporarily suppress his impulse to explode, calming him down. Yet she was still concerned, for she knew that at any moment, Henrik might go berserk. Episode 359 Revis's Revenge The next bout featured Sarah and Revis. This was a match that everyone had been looking forward to. After all, Sarah and Revis's rankings were close, with Sarah in the fifth position and Revis in the fourth. There was no difference in strength between them. The battle was thus likely to be exciting. Revis, who had ascended to the arena, smiled bitterly and said to Sarah, Junior sister, I hope you will show me mercy. Jake's attack in the previous round had caused Revis's spirit sword to be damaged, and it had also affected his mind. At this time, Revis could only use 80% of his strength. His opponent, Sarah, was not much weaker than him, so Rebus knew that he was most likely in trouble this time. Senior brother, you must be joking. I should be asking you for mercy, Sarah said modestly and politely. However, when Drindus gave the order, Sarah instantly turned into a poisonous snake intent on catching its prey. She stabbed at Rebus's heart from an extreme angle so that he could never have seen her coming. Yet because Rebus was familiar with Sarah's tactics, he knew how cunning she was in battle. Therefore, he knew what to do. 
with a wave of his spirit blade, he caused swords to rain from the sky, surrounding Sarah's body. Away! Sarah screamed as she waved her blade continuously and deflected the falling blades. As she did, she realized that the sword rain was not as powerful as she had imagined. The sword in her hand danced in a circle and suddenly rushed forward. The falling swords then turned into spiritual power and dissipated in mid-air. Sarah, who was good at finding flaws in her opponent, saw that the sword rain was being scattered. At the same time, Revis could not help but take a small step back. Sarah immediately discovered his weakness. Again, she lunged at him with her sword directed at his heart. I admit defeat, Revis exclaimed with Sarah a mere two feet away from him. Sarah shot back. Brother, I feel that you did not use your full strength at all. Could it be that you are deliberately letting me win? Sarah knew that Revis was capable of creating a devastatingly powerful sword rain, yet he had not done so this time. This left her suspicious. I can only say that I have done my best, Revis offered. The reality was that because he was injured and his sword damaged, he mustered as much power as he could, but he did not want to explain this fact in too much detail to Sarah. He thought of Jake, who was the cause of his depleted power, and shot the young disciple of the Hampton family a sharp look. Sarah followed his gaze and considered the origin of his spite. Putting two and two together, she was immediately able to deduce that Revis had not been his usual self because Jake had injured him more seriously in the last round than was evident to the naked eye. Jake noticed their stares, but for now, he had to put any thoughts of addressing them out of his mind, for he was up next, and his opponent was Giannis, who was ranked 13th overall and was thus the weakest of the finalists. Feeling little pressure, Jake sauntered up to the arena, yet just as he had set foot on it, he heard Giannis yell out, I admit defeat. At first, Jake was a bit taken aback, but after he thought about it for a few moments, it made sense to him. After all, Jake had just defeated the 10th ranked and 4th ranked opponents handily, so clearly Giannis would be no match for him. As Jake stepped down from the arena, Nikolai approached him and commented, I think you can expect others to admit defeat rather than face you in the coming rounds. And before Jake could even answer, Drindus announced the start of the 5th round matches, shouting, in the first bout, the number 10 ranked Adam will face the 9th ranked Simeon. Although the spring and autumn sweep used by Adam was strange and unpredictable, it was completely useless against Simeon, who was good at defense. No matter how accurately the spring and autumn sweep pinpointed Simeon's vital points, it would not be able to reach past his defenses. This was equivalent to wasting time. Furthermore, Simeon was good at counterattacking. So, after dozens of exchanges, he took advantage of the fact that Adam had not launched a new attack to knock him to the ground. The second match of the fifth round was between Marcel, who was ranked first, and Mark, who was ranked ninth. The result of the match was as one would expect. Facing Marcel, Mark chose to immediately admit defeat after setting one foot in the arena. The next bout transpired similarly, with the twelfth-ranked Torsten immediately ceding to the second-ranked Giorgio. Yet the fourth match would prove a highlight, no doubt, as it featured the third-ranked Henrik against the fourth-ranked Revis. These two disciples had a pretty good relationship, and the two of them often competed in private. The results had been pretty even, with wins and losses for both. Henrik thus could not guarantee that he would win this match. After stepping onto the arena, he was on full alert, as if he were facing a great enemy. However, much to the surprise of Henrik and all onlookers, Revis, who had stepped onto the arena, had no intention of fighting Henrik. Instead, he chose to admit defeat. Brother, why? Henrik instinctively uttered. Since they were friends, he felt he could be straightforward. Plus, he was concerned about Revis's behavior. Revis offered, Senior brother, once you have fought Jake, you will understand. As Revis spoke, he could not help but imagine a scenario in which Henrik or someone else, would take revenge on Jake for the injuries he had caused him. Episode 360 A Verbal Exchange Revis's vague explanation made Henrik look at Jake. This was the first time he had paid attention to him. After a careful look, Henrik found that the good-looking Jake didn't seem to be a threat at all. That is to say, he didn't look like an expert who could hurt a top-ranked disciple. However, 
The fact that Jake had been able to defeat Adam, who was ranked 10th, was enough to show that he was extraordinary. Jake thus had tricks up his sleeve that had to be accounted for. Having been noticed by Henrik for some reason, the doubt in Jake's heart became even stronger. However, it was his turn to participate in the next match. Therefore, he temporarily put any thoughts of Henrik aside and focused on centering himself. After using the movement technique to jump onto the arena, Jake looked at Sarah, who was also casting the movement technique. Even moving at a high speed, her posture was much more beautiful than his. She gracefully landed in the arena. Sarah, 18 years old, came from the Neptune Dynasty's Level 7 Bel Air family. She was the only female disciple among the Outer Sect's top 10 disciples, and she had a low Level 6 cultivation talent and a pre-transforming period cultivation base. Her battle strength could reach the high level of the energy transforming realm, and she was good at using sinister and cunning means of attack. After this information about Sarah had flashed in his mind, Jake raised his vigilance and greeted, Senior sister, hello! Sarah mischievously twisted a lock of hair and commented softly, Brother Hampton, since you were able to break into the ranking competition with the strength of a peak 8th layer body refining warrior, your talent and potential must be excellent. In addition, you were able to defeat Adam and Rivas handily, so please be gentle with me. After all, I am the only girl in this competition. Senior sister, stop joking, Jake retorted playfully. You are ranked fifth among the disciples of the outer sect. Your strength must not be underestimated. So, in fact, I should be asking you for mercy. As everyone present knew, Jake was a master wordsmith, and now he was using his way with words to deflect Sarah's wily ways. You are quite eloquent, Sarah exclaimed. Indeed, she was quite enjoying this repartee with Jake and even wanted it to continue. Yet Alicia and Mona, who were carefully watching this flirtation between Sarah and Jake, could not help but roll their eyes. Drindus, the overseer of the competition, was also not thrilled by the fact that these two opponents were subtly flirting rather than preparing for the serious business of battle. She could not help but frown and suggestively clear her throat. Taking her cues, Sarah launched the first attack. She shouted, Snake Chama, deploying one of her most powerful martial skills. Jake retorted by screaming, Fire Harvester! The two opponents had launched their attacks at exactly the same second. At the same time, everyone in the crowd was stunned, for the tone had abruptly transformed from casual exchange to intense fighting. Sarah deployed her flexible saber as if it were a snake, and she skillfully wrapped it around Jake's spirit blade. The steel was like rubber as it whipped around the blade, striking Jake's left hand in the process. Jake knew that such flexible swords were particularly dangerous, so he hurriedly activated the spiritual power in his energy center to level up the power being exerted by his spirit blade. When he did, Sarah's sword immediately froze as if stunned, then began to unravel and let go of Jake's blade. Both warriors could feel the intensity of the exchange between their spiritual powers. As her sword was blasted away from Jake's, causing some damage to it, Sarah casually commented, Jake, you are too cunning. You actually dared to sneak attack me. If it wasn't for the fact that I have some substantial strength in reserve, I'm afraid I would have been injured by your steel knife. She was clearly working hard to maintain her cool, but at the same time, she used the movement technique to retreat, a sign that she needed to regroup before proceeding. Rivas's words replayed in her mind, Only when you fight with Jake will you know how terrifying he is. Even with such warnings, however, she had not expected Jake to so deftly handle energy transforming level techniques. At the same time, because her blade was pliable, it had been able to absorb the force of Jake's attack and, unlike Rivas, she had not been physically injured in the process. She resolved to change tactics as she retreated from Jake, hoping that well-chosen words would distract him and throw him off balance, thus giving her a window to attack. Jake, do you really have the heart to be so ruthless with a girl? She exclaimed in a mock surprise tone. Unfortunately, she had underestimated Jake's composure, and perhaps she had underestimated the viciousness in his heart. Because in his eyes, as long as they fought, there was only the distinction between enemies and friends, regardless of gender. That is to say, Jake was entirely unimpacted by Sarah's words. He held on to his spirit blade tight and continued to chase after her. Sarah, on the other hand, was angry that Jake had embarrassed her by ignoring her verbal teasing and instead increasing his strength. 
She upped the level of her movement technique as she shrieked, You really are a heartless bastard. I hope no woman will ever give you the time of day. Jake calmly retorted, Sister, you are not qualified to judge whether I am heartless or not. At the same time, he deployed the sun-scorching skill again, forcing Sarah to continually dodge his attacks. Maybe I could judge better if we got to know each other, Sarah unexpectedly offered. It seemed that she had forgotten all about her rage at Jake, and she spoke in a shy and seductive manner. <laughs>